Well, g'day to President Steve O'Connor and the rest of the attendees at the Planning Institute of Australia's annual conference. I apologise I can't be there in person. Um, I'm here in my electorate down in, in Melbourne with a, only a few days left before this campaign is over and I'm really just spending the time down here. But I wish you well and I want to thank you for the opportunity just to address you in just a, a few minutes. I just wanted to say a few points really. Um, firstly, just to say thank you to the Planning Institute of Australia's work and the contribution you have made. Um, I particularly want to say thank you for the most recent report which you've put together, um, The Tipping Point, which I know is a big focus of your conference. And I think it's a very good report and I'd like to think that uh, many of the elements of our population plan incorporate your thinking. And what I'd like to do is, is take you through where we're at compared to what you have been advocating, um, particularly in relation to this concept of a national settlement. And I hope by articulating that, you'll see that we are well down that path towards developing a, a much more coherent plan for managing our future population growth than what we have ever had before at the federal government. So let me take you through at least a few elements of our population plan. To start with though, you probably know that Prime Minister Morrison created a, a new portfolio last year when he became Prime Minister. And it put together cities, population planning and infrastructure all together into one portfolio of which I'm the Minister. And of course it makes sense that those three things be brought together because they have to be considered as one. And since that time, we've been developing and have outlined our population plan, and we've also outlined more city deals and further we've outlined more infrastructure. Let me take you through though, how we're particularly thinking about national settlement and about population planning. The key problem which in part you identify is that Australia is growing very fast as a nation, about 1.6% per annum in terms of our population growth. But the population is not, the growth is not evenly distributed to, in fact, to the contrary, contrary, we're growing very, very fast in Melbourne, Sydney and South East Queensland, while we have relatively slow growth in some of the smaller cities and many of the regional centres. So those three big capitals now comprise about three quarters of the entire population growth. Melbourne, my hometown, where I am, grew by an incredible 2.7% last year, which meant there was only two other English speaking cities in the world that added more people than Melbourne. They have been Houston and Atlanta, and that gives it a sense of just how quickly this great city has been growing, but also Sydney and South East Queensland have um, been growing very rapidly as well. Most of that growth has been due to migration, which constitutes about 60% of our, of our overall growth. And I say that to give a bit of context in terms of where we have been coming from in our population planning, because really our goal has been um, to try to take a bit of pressure off our big capital cities, which have been growing so fast without the infrastructure necessarily keeping up, and also supporting faster growth in some of the smaller cities and the regional centres. So how have we been doing this? Well, the first step has actually been in relation to the migration settings. As I said, it constitutes about 60% of our overall population growth. But in Melbourne, about 65%. And in Sydney, it's about 83% of the population growth into that big capital. So step one of our population plan is to actually ease up on our migration, on the migration cap from 190,000 per annum down to 160,000 cap per annum. And then within that, to allocate 23,000 positions specifically for the smaller capitals and the regions. On top of that, we're also creating further incentives for international students, which is such a big component of our population growth. We're creating incentives for more international students to go to those smaller cities and the regions as well. To a city like Adelaide or a Darwin um, or a Hobart or some of the smaller regional centres, some of those regional centres, which are actually looking for people and want more international students. And by doing that, we think we can actually increase, decrease the pressure on those big capitals while support the growth of the regions. Now, are there jobs in those regions? Well, in fact, 
The data shows that in many of the regional locations, they're absolutely crying out for workers. There's some places like Dubbo which have 2% unemployment. In fact, I'd see mayors almost every week from different regional centres um, asking for more people to go to their locations because they simply can't get a warm body to do the work available. About 60,000 jobs, in fact, are available today just in the regions alone. So that's the first element of our plan is the migration settings, easing the pressure off the big capitals and encouraging more growth into the regions and some of the smaller cities. Part two of the plan is that while we are doing that is to heavily invest in more congestion busting infrastructure and more national infrastructure across the country. And we have now got the single largest investment in infrastructure in Australian history. A 10 year pipeline, $10 billion worth of infrastructure being rolled out. And that includes the, the major city shaping infrastructure, such as the Melbourne Airport Rail Link or a new Western Sydney Airport. But it also includes congestion, um, addressing congestion pinch points in the suburbs of our great city, because often it's those intersections before you get onto the freeway which hold you up as much as the freeway itself. The other element though of our infrastructure plan, and this ties in with um, point one with the immigration plan and our decentralisation agenda, is we're developing a fast rail agenda. And our fast rail agenda is very much based on connecting up the large capitals to the satellite cities so that people can live and work or live and um, have the uh, lifestyle of a regional centre, yet still be able to commute quickly into the big capitals such as Sydney and Melbourne on a, on a very regular basis. We're starting with the first one, B to Geelong to Melbourne, and we've got two billion on the table to get that going and make that a 30 minute journey rather than the present 60 minute journey. And then our plan over the next decade or two would see a lot of the, your, the, a lot of the satellite cities connected by fast rail. And then the third element of our plan really goes to the, the governance. And I know this is something which the Planning Institute of Australia has really pressed. And that is to say that we're wanting to work and setting up the structures to work much more closely with the states and territories so that they have a greater say over our immigration settings and over population policies for their cities and their states, but also we have more say over where the infrastructure goes as well because we need to work together at both the state and the federal level in making these settings right. And so consequently, we've been taking this to COAG and developing up a better population planning framework um, to determine exactly where we can grow and how fast we can grow and then matching our immigration settings and our infrastructure accordingly. That's been complemented, of course, by city deals, something which we pioneered um, several years ago, and we've now had many which we have signed, um, and we'll have many more which are, are underway as well, including the largest of them all, which actually will be in southeast Queensland where you are right now, and that'll be worked on over the next 12 months. And of course, those city deals, as you're no doubt aware, bring the three levels of government together um, in a broader plan for a particular geographical region, and they outline a, a 10 to 20 year horizon for growth. And I think they work very well. They're frequently done on cross-party politics and long-term horizons. Um, and I think they're a great model for the future. As I said, we've already signed six or seven of them. We've got another few underway um, and there'll be more to come after that. So really that's the crux of our population plan. The immigration settings, reducing the pressure on the big cities, supporting the growth of the smaller ones in the regions. The infrastructure plan, including fast rail, and finally the better population planning framework with the states and through the city deals with the local councils. And I think that plan is a very good one to build from into the future. And it, will, it means that for the first time, really, we've got a coherent, serious, integrated population plan for Australia. I just want to finish off by again thanking you and all of the um, representatives there at the conference to thank you for the work which you have done.
thank you to the Planning Institute of Australia, particularly for your advocacy and the way that you interact with us at the federal level. And I think we've got a, a good plan um, and it's one to take us forward to make our population, to make the management of our population even better into the future.